I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 7th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua, and today we are in the uh, condominiums San Agustin here in the southeast side of Leon in Colonia Universidad. This is an area I honestly didn't know existed. We found it today, and we're going to go exploring and show some of this to you because it is seriously cool. I'm going to show it to you right after the bump. This is San Augustine, and I'm afraid we were unable to record live while we were there because as soon as we did the intro, the guard who's in front of us there on the bicycle came up and said, ah, oh, people don't want you vlogging in here. I'm like, yeah, I understand. Like, that's how things are because uh, a lot of times these quiet neighborhoods, the vlogging is actually pretty loud. And while it's not really intrusive, I get it. There's a lot of great places in Nicaragua that work this way. That actually makes it so much harder to get the word out about how amazing some of the housing opportunities and living opportunities are around Nicaragua because they're so private. In the United States, these places would be wide open in most cases and you'd be able to record without a problem. Not always, but much of the time. And here we're not able to do that. And so that makes for a lot more complication to showing you guys how cool this is. But let's talk about this. This neighborhood is absolutely gorgeous. It's obviously fairly new. Uh, so we have um, a lot of new construction, current construction going on. All of the style, extremely modern. There's a, at least three different styles of houses and all of these can be customized, of course. Uh, we looked at the prospectus for the houses and they vary on the listing from 65,000 to purchase to 85,000 to purchase um, with a model in the middle. Uh, and of course, customizations can modify that some, but that's the basic price range. Uh, and the modifications are generally relatively minor. We did see some interesting different configurations, including covered garages and uh, open areas and extensions of indoor space and outdoor living spaces. A lot of different things using basically the same essential configurations. All of the fronts and yards are very well uh, uh, manicured, beautiful. They're not very mature, uh, simply because this is a new construction, so it tends to be very youthful trees, youthful plants, but everything's very lush and green, very well maintained. And of course, there's only three models. There aren't any colors. This differs from a lot of Central American neighborhoods in that everything is this very neutral, modern look and feel, but it is beautiful and you can imagine just how good this is going to look when they go even further and get more of these done that's the front gate over there on the left of the screen there you can see it a bit uh, where you come in by car so this is a fully gated community you have to check in with a guard as you come in same as san andreas which we have not shown yet but you did see it in yesterday's video you saw the gate i do hope to show a little bit of that but it's going to be very hard same thing that is a uh, uh no vlogging community so we have to be super discreet when recording these things and not not be intrusive in any way um and hence i didn't have a moment to get stabilization on the camera so this is a little bit wonky i really apologize we added stabilization after the fact in final cut and had to zoom in and do a bunch of stuff uh to get the video as it is uh, so i'll try better to be be much more prepared in the future but it turned out okay you really can get a feel though for what this community looks like on the left here is actually a tiny little park it's about two-thirds of a house lot not quite big enough to put in a house so there's a garden there and it's very nice overall we were just blown away by this community the style is excellent the construction is excellent we did get to go through uh and see houses there and I have to say they are fantastic from the inside. They're not big. Uh, a lot of these are three bedroom, two bath. There are some two bedroom, two bath. Uh, those would be the $65,000 ones, um, but they have um, air conditioned. They're built to be insulated, but they also have, and this is important in Central America and it's a thing that's done. You can kind of see it on this one right now on the screen on the right. There's this sla uh, slats next to the front door. Of course, it's off the screen now. Uh, and that is actually an interior garden and you can open an interior door and have really heavy uh, airflow through the house, but it's highly secure. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice way that you get middle of the house 
um, massive airflow, big volume of air moving through. Uh, so you don't have to use air conditioning for the bulk of the house. Uh, and it's common to just uh, air condition, say, a master suite and let the rest of the house be uh, air cooled. But you could put air conditioning on these seal up and you could do anything you want. So this gives you extremely modern and very upper middle class living in Nicaragua. It is truly a great option. Now, this is uh, in Colonia Universidad. Uh, this is uh, southeast of the city, just off of the Pan American Highway Alternative, Nicaragua 3. Uh, so on the road heading towards Managua. So a uh, different part of the city, but we've been showing a bit of this the last few days. We're kind of focused here at the moment. Uh, really interesting. From here, we're going to head on to another development that is a more what I call standard Nicaraguan development called Casa Leon. It's part of the Casa Nica uh, building projects. And these, much less expensive, these go as low as about 19,000 for new construction, up to, I saw as high as 35,000 for what they list. And there are definitely some unique ones in this community that go much higher than 35,000, but they fall into that basic range, that basic category. So much more affordable. This is where, what we would say, standard middle class. This is like where your core middle class of Nicaragua is much more likely to live. These are beautiful homes, well-made Maintained. This community is fantastic. Um, obviously, a bit different than the one we just looked at, San Augustine, but great trees, well maintained houses, really well cared for. These are people who clearly love their homes and have the resources and time to take care of them. So, you get this really nice, safe neighborhood, really quiet, beautiful, but with much smaller houses. These are mostly, again, two and three bedroom, but everything's going to be smaller. But of course, it's half the price. These can be air conditioned, but they're not meant to be. These are certainly intended to be air cooled, but they're they're a box design. So you could seal them up and, and air, uh, air condition them if that's something that you wanted. You can see how beautiful the trees are here, though. Just as we walk through, this is really great. It's, it's really something. Overall, I was really excited to find this community. This is the same style that I showed uh, in a number of episodes in Ciudad Sandino some time ago. Sorry for the dogs playing in the background. Uh, and this is almost identical construction, and we see this around the country. We all see, also saw a community like this, much smaller and much newer, up in El Crucero in the border run episode we did about a week ago. So this style is something that you find all over the country. If you like this, um, you're gonna be able to find it. I found my first ones like this in Madagalpa and Granada eight years ago. Uh, and this is kind of what I call standard Nicaraguan, which I already alluded to, sorry for the hand. Uh, when Nicaraguans are, are doing large scale construction projects today around the country, this is the style that you're going to find. This is a very practical uh, style house. And remember, we've talked about this in other episodes. I just wanted to walk over to this beautiful open field behind the houses. This is such a big, quiet area. Like, it's beautiful. And you can see, I think that this development owns this field um, and can expand to that. They have another space on the other side that, uh, well, the dogs are really going crazy. Um, that you can, all the way in front where I'm facing now, they have a big, big open area that they've cleared clearly cleared out and are installing new roads. So I think they're preparing to put in hundreds of new houses. It, that's what it looks like anyway. This is a pulperia in the community. This community does have a few restaurants in it. Um, I didn't see any that are like sit down restaurants. They're all to go. So you could either walk up and take food away or, um, or you could um, uh, do pedidos ja and have it delivered. Uh, but that's that's kind of the thing that they have there. But there are a few of these small businesses uh, that do exist um, inside this community and communities like this, uh, especially the pulperias. Um, that's what uh, makes it. <laughs> the dogs are just going crazy. I have to get video of this so you can see it. I didn't mean to get video of the dogs while they did this, but they're so ridiculous that I have to show it to you at least a little bit because they're making so much noise. This is what happens whenever I try to record the sound of my voice. If the dogs are there, they get so worked up from me talking because I'm I'm kind of excited. I'm telling you about things. And I'm, I'm definitely speaking in a louder voice. And so they just go crazy while I do it. So I apologize for that. I will do the best to filter it out, but there's no way to make it go away completely. Uh, so uh, the, remember, these 
uh, lifestyle in most of Nicaragua and certainly here in León of all places. Um, and there you can see signs for the financing for, for these houses. This will not count for expats, but if you're a Nicaraguan and you're interested in homes like this, they, are, they can be financed and they're generally just a little bit more than $200 a month. Uh, for normal mortgage payments. So that gives you an idea of what people are paying uh, in the middle classes. And a lot of the people here own cars, not the majority. Um, you can tell as you drive through or walk through that lots and lots of the garages are used for storage. Uh, many of the, the spaces have never seen a car, but there are many cars here as well. So it's every one of these houses is designed to be able to house a car, um, often outside, sometimes inside, uh, often gated, but outside, uh, lots of different options. This is a park up front with a playground. I wanted to go through and show this. It's very much a newer playground like the ones of my childhood in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, it looks exactly like what we used to have when I was little. Uh, but it's uh, it's beautiful to find it here. So if you live in the community, this is a great community to walk around. If you have dogs or kids, you can you can go for walks easily. Go to the playground, the places to sit, places to walk. It's all very very nice. It is important to mention this is extremely suburban. So this is outside of Leon. Farther than St. Augustine, this is beyond Colonia Universidad, although it's in the general area they may associate with them. Um, if you look at a map, and I will try to pop one up here uh, a couple times while we're doing the video, um, this is located southeast of Leon. If you find University um, uh, Colonia Universidad, uh, and the Parque Ruben Dario, which is kind of in the middle of it, and Colonia Universidad runs uh, diagonally along the highway, um, if you find uh, uh, San Andreas, that is a residencia in the middle of the Colonia. If you find um, uh, San Augustine, it's it's farther out. And if you then keep going farther out from the city, uh, then you're going to come across uh, Casa Leon. And you can tell it's pretty far out. So that makes this um, a lot more, a lot more important to have a car out here uh, because it's it is so far. You, there is public transportation. We did look into this. We were in this community because one of our viewers had been interested in houses out here and had sent us uh, to go look at them. And then she decided to that she wanted to do backpacking and so is not um, actively going to be looking at one. Although the hope we have it scheduled to go tour one of these in the in the upcoming future, but we don't know if we're going to be able to pull that off or not what we're trying okay so this one this green one we discovered is so gorgeous this is so much bigger than the normal ones it has an outdoor pizza oven i stopped and videoed it a bit and marcella and i were discussing it as we were there and she started taking pictures of it as well that's her with the lumix fc 300 and uh so this one that we're i'm going to turn back uh shows really how much customization you can do how much options you have it's a corner lot so it's got this corner entrance instead of a normal entrance. They decided to really gate it, uh, but they made this big courtyard area very open. They added an outdoor roof and did a bunch of stuff to make for a lot more living space. It is so cute, so livable, such great everything. I was so impressed with this one. Um, and this matching green tile on the outside to the green of the house, um, just really well done. And Different streets within the community tend to have a different vibe. Uh, this one is a bit more open and manicured. Some of them are uh, bigger houses. Some of them are smaller houses. And they tend to kind of clump together by street a little bit. Um, the darker, narrower streets will have the smaller houses. Um, and these will have the bigger. Uh, this model that they're showing with the, the Way the Stones, it was just on the left. That's one of the $35,000 ones. I I've, can kind of eyeball them. Um, so that's on the more expensive side. I'm sure that one that was green on the corner must have been more like forty-five or 50000 to build. Very difficult to guess. Um, this one behind the trees here on the corner, another one that's quite different uh, than the others. Anytime you find one that's truly unique, it's going to be a big um, upsell. This one on the right, like that front, that is definitely more expensive to add that on than the base. But we're talking about base prices as low as 19000 So you really have to keep perspective that an upgrade may not be that much excuse me may not be that much money um in many cases this one coming up on the corner with the curved stone wall the two story anything that's two story is going to be a completely different structure that means someone bought the lot and custom built because they just wanted to be in the community which is really a great sign of how it works and how it's flexible and how desirable the community is that someone wanted to invest in a 
rather larger home uh, inside this community. And they're not doing it just because it's the only thing available. They're not doing it because they had to work within a really tight budget. They could have put that house in many different places. They did not have to be in a lotification like this. When I was mentioning the extension area and the new road going in, this is what I was talking about. Look at how much open space they have there uh, to put in more things. Uh, that's that's a lot of space, and I think that's a new road and and water service being being dug in there. And there's a crew working on it actively right now. So this is not like something that was being done and then stopped. They are working on it as we were doing this. So uh, exciting to see. Um, developments like this that are so great for in, improving uh, living standards in the country happening because what's amazing is the the rising middle class which we're going to talk about in a future episode coming up pretty soon I, I just gotta go back this house is gorgeous this two-story I love the design the gray maybe not my thing a little bit too modern and it's not actually huge it feels huge because of the community it's in but it is a good size house with a lot of space um, to do things and, and just really well done. And then we're back to the more normal houses. Um, so when we were in Nicaragua eight years ago and we lived here, um, there was a relatively small middle class. It, of course, existed, but it just wasn't a big thing. And so many people lived in such unbelievably low cost housing. Um, it was very depressing uh, to, for us as expats to have to live with that, but of course, more depressing that that had to happen to people. And one of the great things we're seeing in Nicaragua is this really rapid move from poverty into the middle class for a large portion of Nicaraguan society. Now, of course, this is a poor country and a lot of people remain quite poor and a number of people need to still work on the farms. So those people have to live out where the farms are. Um, and often that looks less desirable just because we're not used to what it looks like. These houses look more desirable. These do not have the grass yet, so they look less. But this style of home, once it has all the beautiful grass and stuff around it, to Americans looks small. It looks conservative, but it does look nice in most cases. This one on the corner is interesting. Uh, I think it's a basic house, but they added a few extra walls and, and special stuff to give themselves kind of an uh, enclosed outdoor living space. So a pretty easy upgrade to a normal house. Uh, and they obviously have a truck, a little bit more expensive stuff. And you can tell that a lot of people who do have vehicles here, it's motorcycles. If they have cars, they tend to be small Korean models. It's just the way it is, right? But this is where society had been living in some really terrible conditions just eight years ago, uh, these styles of houses have come along and provided for a really significant uh, percentage of Nicaraguan society to be able to move into beautiful, new, modern, flexible, safe, comfortable homes. Uh, and, and in doing so, Right, we're seeing an uptake in internet access at home. We're seeing an uptake in safety and ability for, uh, of course, you know, good home life makes for better educational opportunities and those kinds of things. So we're seeing life in Nicaragua change uh, quite significantly and very quickly. Um, and these types of homes uh, are really a symptom of that or a cause of that potentially or, or both um, in many cases. So I'm I'm always excited to find these communities and having spent time uh, in these types of communities, I can say very, uh, very firsthand that these can be very comfortable homes. Um, uh, certainly they are small, right? By American and Canadian standards, these are outrageously small um, and it does take a lot of adapting uh, to be able to live in them. But if you're from the United States and you're used to apartment living, um, then these are going to be much more in line with that. Small rooms, um, fewer number of them, uh, even compared to a lot of uh, upscale apartments in the United States. The bedrooms here are going to be very tight. Uh, just the overall space is going to be very small, but it is a standalone house. So unlike most apartments, you're going to have your own yard, your own front deck, for example, in that house we just looked at. Um, and, and that stuff uh, means you, you have more usable space that you own, more space to store your stuff or whatever. And of course, you could add bodegas to these. There's any number of things you can do. You could probably reconfigure one of the three bedrooms to be a two bedroom if that's more suited to what it is you're looking for. Uh, but for, um, I think, expats, 
right, which is uh, most of uh, most of my viewers here, right, are not living in Nicaragua. They're not Nicaraguans saying, oh, there's a nice community I could go look at in another city, or there's a com community in my city I didn't know about. That may happen, and certainly drop in and say hi. It's great that you're here. But the majority of my viewers uh, are existing expats or people who are interested in being expats or people who just have a general interest in Nicaragua. And for people who are looking to move to Nicaragua, obviously there is a really good percentage who want the beach life and uh, expensive, very luxury custom housing. And for you, this is not that kind of option. But there is a certain very real uh, percentage of my viewers and potential viewers um, for whom Moving to Nicaragua uh, does not need to be an expensive thing. It may be because you're, you're downsizing because of retirement or you're an empty nester or you're a digital nomad and you're looking for uh, a smaller investment and a much more practical expenditure um, or you're simply a person who doesn't need a lot of space. Some of us enjoy having small spaces. They're easier to clean. They're easier to cool. They're easier to maintain. Um, there's just less to deal with in a lot of cases. Uh, these kinds of houses may be exactly what you're looking for. And it's this type of stuff, the dogs took a break in their back, uh, is exactly what I think expats overlook. Um, expats will very often see uh, extremely low cost housing because it exists along a highway or they drive through a barrio and they see old uh, uh, often colonial construction that is now quite inexpensive simply because it's not very desirable even though it's in a city and and that's what they perceive as the available affordable housing low cost housing and certainly that exists and if that's something you like you're you're in luck right there's there's a lot of it and it's extremely available now due to the downturn in the housing market but if you're looking for something in that price range but more quiet outside the city center, uh, a little bit more luxury, um, uh, more more dependable, right? Old buildings have more maintenance needs. New buildings have, have less. Uh, these types of communities exist nearly anywhere that you would be interested in almost any place that you're going to head out and and want to live. It doesn't matter. Madagalpa, Hinotega, Esteli, Leon, Chinandega, Granada, Messiah, uh, Managua, all of the cities and sometimes the villages have developments that would be reminiscent of this. Often smaller, this is a big one in a big city, uh, but the style of houses are extremely similar. And in many cases, I think that they're sharing, I think they're sharing blueprints. So I think you're actually getting the same or almost the same houses across very wide areas. This is a cul-de-sac and there's a, like a little park on the side. Um, these dogs were a little bit aggressive and Marcella decided she didn't want to come up there. They're not as aggressive as my dogs right now, but they were they were a little bit barking at us and a little bit snarly. And of course, I'm just the friendliest thing with dogs. I'm like, oh, doggies can play. And they're like, oh, you're not interesting. And Marcella decided to run away down the street. And so they chased her down the street. So I got to walk through the park uh, as she ran through the streets to get away from the dogs, who I don't think were being vicious. They were just a little bit nervous about their home. Uh, and you can see they put in beautiful walking paths through like the little park and it's like this is great um, it doesn't really go anywhere but it's really nicely done uh, these houses could be a really phenomenal option um, especially for if you're a single person um, especially single females who are looking for their own house uh, but but need that community for you don't want to be living out on, I mean I'm not saying you don't many single women and single men don't want to live out in a rural area in a house all by themselves and feel really isolated, um, whether for resources or safety or whatever. A community like this where you, you have lots of neighbors that you could get to know, um, very easy to become part of your community. This could be perfect uh, and, and very low cost. And, the, and the, if you don't need the space, these really are nice. And for, for a lot of expats moving to Nicaragua or anywhere in Central America, you're not bringing that much stuff with you and you probably should Try to not buy an outrageous amount of stuff when you get here. There's generally no reason to. Lifestyle here does not require owning and purchasing loads and loads of things. And so there's a real opportunity to downsize when you move down and then continue that downsized lifestyle once you arrive. And living in a house like this will encourage that. Uh, and you only need to get enough to fill it, which will be very inexpensive. And of course, be, being on such an extreme housing budget gives you the potential opportunity to purchase very efficient 
and very nice furniture and kitchen appointments and such. So you can get a, a small, very efficient oven that, that is cost effective to operate. If you want to air condition, you know, it would be easy to add uh, some additional insulation, put in um, split units and have very cost effective uh, air conditioning. And I have to mention as to cost of air conditioning, some friends we have that live very near here, the ones who are just moving out, they have a house much, much larger than these and less sealed, not designed in any way for air conditioning. Uh, and they ran some air conditioning, but they're very conservative with it. Uh, mostly air cooled. They work from home. So they have computers going pretty much all the time. Uh, they have lights and, and all kinds of things, right? They're not, they're not running an austere lifestyle. And whenever I've been there, they have their TV on. So they're not like carefully turning every single thing off. And, you know, they're not being the traditional American dad with why is the light switch on? Um, and even so, they've been able to uh, get their, their power bill as low as $17. And as I mention them, I hear that their car has just pulled into my driveway. Uh, I'm getting a delivery of a television. So I'm going to pause this and be right back. Hopefully you guys won't notice, but there's probably going to be a little bit of a blip. So overall, communities like this, I think, offer a lot of opportunity for an awful large number of potential expats who are looking to integrate a bit more Nicaraguan society, who don't want to be in enclaves, who want to really be steeped in Nicaraguan culture and society and activities and want to live that lifestyle and take advantage of even lower cost than you're going to find in other arenas, right? If you're uh, trying to be in an enclave or you're trying to be in a more uh, separate or fancy or American style or whatever housing situation, chances are you're going to be located in a place that's going to cost more, not a lot. You're still going to save a ton of money compared to uh, the United States or Canada or whatever, but you're not going to be leveraging the degree of cost savings that exists for people who are looking at really being more steeped in quote unquote living like a Nicaraguan um, and it's not for everyone for sure it's not for most people but this is I think very culturally interesting that there is this beautiful wonderful lifestyle that exists for Nicaraguans that we are not very aware of from the outside because these uh, uh, communities are not something that we just drive by and see from the street very often and it, it's not something you're going to get invited to until you've lived uh, for a long time very likely you need to know people who are going to be like oh come to my house or whatever and then you're like oh this is where people live um, but uh, for those who are looking for something a little bit different. Um, I think that this type of living can be extremely nice uh, and provide for a lot of other activities in life. Um, because like I said, people tend to live outside the house. You don't need the space inside the house because this is a launching point for your activities outside, going to restaurants, going to bars, going to concerts, just going out, sitting outside and doing things. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can support us directly through Buy Me A Coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I'll put that on the screen. Please consider giving that. That really does a lot to make all of these kinds of adventures possible. It takes a lot of time and effort to go out and do this. And if you're interested in learning more about how my team can help you with relocation to Nicaragua, it could be looking at houses, looking at communities like this, uh, touring different cities, different areas, whether it's remotely by video or actually taking you on tours with us. We would love to do that. Uh, just hit us up at info at relocatenicaragua.com. And as always, share on social media, right? LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Got to get the word out. Got to, got to let people know that this show exists because how else are people going to find us? How are people going to know? How are you going to get that discussion going? Um, right? Let people know how safe it is. Let them know how interesting it is. Uh, and I have to mention the sky here is getting dark. You can see the wind picked up a lot right here at the end. We're, we're heading back to the car uh, because this first real storm of the season is rolling in. You can see it behind the houses there, the gray sky uh, back behind. Um, we've had two light rains so far this season, but this is the first really serious rain. So it's, it's, a few hours away, but we didn't know we could hear the thunder starting. It felt like rain was imminent. And so we're like, we probably should go because those first rains of the season bring a lot of dust out of the sky. You get kind of dirty. After that, it's clean rain, but those first ones, and it's not like, it's not like toxic. It's just dust, right? But a lot of dust comes out of the sky in those first couple of rains. And this one's going to be a big one. So thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.